Hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar session brought to you by Uppsala University Sweden and Siksha.com. Student, this is an informative session about the master's program that are being offered by the university to all international students. Before we move further, I would like to introduce our presenter from the university. So I welcome Ms. Cecilia Tiscornia. She's the international officer at the university. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for joining us today and for doing the pre uh, presentation for the students. Student, another imp important information for all of you. If you have questions, I will request you to please post your questions in the question section. We will take them at the end of the session. If you wish to take questions, if you wish to ask questions directly, I will request you to please click on the raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your questions directly to the presenter. I will now request Cecilia to please start with the session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to everyone who are joining us here today. Um, as already mentioned, my name is Cecilia. I work as an international office at the Play University. And uh, my main uh, job is to talk to uh, prospective students like yourselves who are interested in coming and studying at the Tsai University. Um, today, I'm going to hold a presentation about our university, Sweden, our application, et cetera. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Right, so the agenda for today is I will give you a brief introduction to Sweden and Uppsala, so the city where our university is located. Um, I will talk about the programs that we offer, and I will actually talk about both uh, bachelor's programs and master's programs. I will talk about the application process and what the entry requirements are, uh, the scholarships we offer, and then we will have a Q&A session um, where you can ask questions. So Sweden, where is Sweden? Well, Sweden is a large country in regards to size, but we're pretty small in regards to population. So we're the fifth largest in Europe, um, but we only have 10 million citizens. And we're located pretty far north. Um, we're a Scandinavian country, so neighboring Norway, Finland, Denmark. Um, one thing that um, is important to know that while Sweden, Swedish is the national language in Sweden, um, all Swedes do speak English. So even if you are an international student coming to Sweden with no Swedish language proficiency, you'll still be able to get around in society because all Swedes uh, speak Swedish. So no problem going to the supermarket, talking to friends, etc. cetera. Um, in Sweden, we have uh, higher education is um, a big sector, so to speak. We have 39 universities in the entire country. Um, and some focus areas that people often think about when, talk, when talking about Sweden is equality. We're one of the most equal countries in the world in regards to both gender and economic equality. Um, sustainability is a very um, big focus uh, in regards to Swedish society and Swedish politics um, and innovation. So innovation is, is um, uh, big. You can see that uh, reflected in the programs that we offer at the university, um, the entrepreneurial spirit and the innovative spirit in Sweden is very strong. Uh, so Uppsala then, you might not have heard of us, but we are a small town, but with a big university. So we have about 230,000 people in Uppsala, which means that we're the fourth largest city in Sweden, uh, which may sound very small compared to most Indian cities. But as I said, um, Sweden is a rather uh, small country in regards to population. Um, roughly 50,000 of the people living in Uppsala are connected to the two universities in the city. So we have Uppsala University, which is the university uh, where I work, but we also have an agricultural university in the city. Um, so there's a large uh, student presence. There's, um, there's a large presence of, I mean, just general faculty and staff in the city of Uppsala. And this also means that the city of Uppsala has a very student-friendly environment. There's plenty of cultural, events, sports, entertainment that cater specifically to students. Um, Uppsala is also a very well-connected city. We're about 40 minutes from Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, um, and we're about 15 minutes from Sweden's largest airport. 
So pretty easy to get here if you're traveling from another country and pretty easy to, to leave if you want to travel internationally during your studies as well. And these times are um, by train. So 40 minute train ride to Stockholm and 15 minutes to the airport. So in, uh, this is true for most Swedish universities actually, but uh, Uppsala University in particular, is that we don't have one central campus. Instead, we have 10 different campus, campus areas spread out all over the city of Uppsala. So what you can see here on the map is the, the, um, the central part of Uppsala. You can see the cathedral, the Uppsala castle, and you can also see all the different campus area all throughout the city. And then we also have another campus, our 11th campus, is on an island in the Baltic Sea called Gotland. So we do have our 10 campus areas in the city, but then we also have an extra campus, um, which is pretty far away, but it's on its own island. And that's uh, what I'm going to talk about now. Campus Gotland is our newest campus. So it became part of Uppsala University in 2013. Before that, it was its own uh, local university college. Uh, but now it's part of the university. Um, they have 20 departments there and one center, and it's the Swedish International Center of Education for Sustainable Development. So you might remember that I mentioned sustainability is a big and important factor in Swedish um, society and politics and culture. Well, here you can see that we have an international center for education for sustainable development on one of our campus areas. Um, uh, our Gotland campus is located in the city of Visby, uh, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's a medieval city located on this island, Gotland, and there's a medieval city wall and plenty of medieval buildings. So if you are a student here, you are a student in a very historic environment. Um, we have, oh, I realized that we actually have six bachelor's programs now and six master's programs at Campus Gotland, and they include sustainable management, game design, archaeology, and wind power project management, just to mention a few of them. At Uppsala University, we have a pretty unique student life that we're very proud of, and it's a big reason why many students choose to come here. Um, in Uppsala, we have something called Student Nations, which is a form of student societies where students can gather and uh, meet new friends. Um, they can organize in choirs, orchestras, photography clubs, whatever it may be. This, the, the nation is sort of the student second living room. And they, uh, the history of the student nations comes from the 17th century. So they're old, very old student societies that are pretty unique to Sweden and Uppsala and our other big student city Lund. Uh, in general. We also have six student unions. Um, and one of them is located on our campus on Gotland and where there uh, on Gotland they have the similar function as the student nation. So they do social activities for students but they also um, act as a form of well, a union for students. So make sure that students voices are heard, represent students towards the university, etc. And as I mentioned, there's many student activities and traditions um, that you can take part in, and there are plenty of organizations and sports teams as well. I want to talk briefly about the Swedish classroom, which may be fairly different from what you're used to from your home country. Um, in Sweden, or in the Swedish classroom um, in particular, but it's Swedish society in general, is very informal. So we talk, we only use first names in Sweden. You never use a title, you never call your professor, professor so-and-so, you use their first name and they do the same to you. Um, equality, as I mentioned, is very important in Sweden and you can always expect to be treated um, as a peer or as, a, as an equal by your lecturers and your peers. So um, everyone is equal here. Uh, no titles, no hierarchy in that regard. Uh, we expect our students to study 40 hours per week because it's full-time studies, so it should be um, equivalent to a full-time job. However, you may not spend all these 40 hours in the classroom. Um, usually, you'll be expected to go through literature and study materials on your own, and then you meet in the classroom and you should be able to discuss what you've read. And 
during these discussions, um, it's not about uh, memorizing and just reiterating what you've read. We want you to analyze the material and discuss it and talk in your own words uh, about what you've read and reflect on it. Uh, so we don't want you to just memorize facts. We want you to uh, reflect on it. And if you want to question your professors, that's perfectly fine. That's what we want you to do. Um, so I mentioned we have six bachelor's programs, which you can see um, here listed. We have three programs in game design, and then we have energy transition, sustainable development and industrial engineering, and leadership quality and improvement. Um, again, the sustainability um, factor is very important here too. Um, and then for entry requirements, these are the entry requirements for Indian applicants. They're pretty extensive and a little complicated, so I won't read through them. Um, but if you want to like take a screenshot, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you're not sure whether you meet the requirements, you can just contact us um, and we will help you. So when it comes to master's programs, we have quite a lot of different programs, more than 70 international programs taught entirely in English, no Swedish language proficiency required at all. Um, and some of these programs have different specializations. So we have over 100 different specializations in a range of subjects, as you can see on the screen here. Um, most, we, have, we offer most subjects, um, actually. Um, and for autumn 2022, we actually have quite a few new programs that we are hoping will be um, fairly popular. Um, and we're getting some, um, getting a lot of questions about them already. Um, maybe especially the um, uh, battery technology and energy storage, we think will be um, a popular one with a very, um, up and coming field where a lot of Swedish companies are uh, making huge investments in regards to battery um, development and battery technology. Also with the all electric propulsion systems, also big um, up and coming at the moment. Um, but yes, um, if you want to look at our entire program list, it's available on our website. Um, these are the master's entry requirements. I'm not going to read them um, here and now because it's the same there. They're pretty um, complicated or a lot of information. So if you want to take a screenshot, go ahead, um, or you can just contact us um, and we'll help you. Because it, it sometimes depends on what you've studied, what, for how long, etc. Um, so, in regards to the application, when you apply to a Swedish university, you always apply through the national application uh, portal, which is universityadmissions.se. Um, you can apply to up to four master's programs in one application, and you rank them in order of preference. And that's important to think about, because you can only be admitted to one program, even though you apply to up to four programs. So, um, the highest ranked program should always be the one you want to be admitted to the most, not the one you think you will be admitted to. Because if you're admitted to your first choice, your second, third, and fourth are deleted. So make sure that the, the first choice is the one you want the most. Um, most application documents can be uploaded to the application portal, but sometimes some documents need to be submitted by post or directly from the university. This is usually not the case for our Indian applicants, uh, but it's good to check with us first so that you don't um, make a mistake and then your application is disqualified. The application deadline for this year or for autumn 2022 is 17th of January. And then supporting documents and application fee must have been received by 1st of February. And the admission results will then be published in April. So quite a long wait. Um, yes. Um, we have scholarships through the university that cover the full cost of tuition fee. However, they do not cover living costs. Um, and you apply for these scholarships through our website. Uh, there's no automatic consideration for scholarships. You need to actively apply for them. The scholarship application opens on 18th of January. So the day after the application to the master's or, or bachelor's closes, 
And then the scholarship application closes on the 1st of February. So it's the same deadline as for supporting documents and application fees. And it's very important that you apply on time because it's not possible to submit an application once the application has closed. Recipients for these scholarships are selected based on previous academic performance. Um, so essentially students with higher grades or better grades during their bachelors are more likely to receive a scholarship. Um, the scholarship are, uh, results are announced at the same time as the admission results. So when you get your admission results, you also get the results from the scholarship application. Um, and I'm afraid we don't have any scholarships that are open for Indian, Indian applicants for bachelor's programs. We only have for master's. Um, and on this photograph here to the right, you can see our group of scholarship recipients from a few years back. Um, yes, and I also wanted to finish off by saying that we have a blog, we have an Instagram account, and if you want to follow our current students and see what they're up to in their everyday lives as Atoy University international students, feel free to go ahead and follow us. Um, uh, on our Instagram account, our students post pretty much daily. Um, sometimes they do Q and A, sometimes they just share um, what they've been up to. So highly recommend that you follow if you are interested in studying at our university. Um, that is all I wanted to say for now. I thank you very much for joining and I will open up for any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Cecilia, and thank you for the wonderful presentation. We will start with the questions. Meanwhile, student, if you want to ask questions directly to Cecilia, please click on the raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your questions to her. So the first student I'm going to unmute is Meruna Upadhyay. Meruna, please unmute yourself and ask your question to Cecilia. Hello. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Ma'am, I, I want to ask that uh, my background is from nursing. I'm with nursing background. Uh-huh. So, I want to do my master's master's in nursing nursing field only so i uh, my queries is uh, i i till now i didn't have any english may i didn't give any english medium test so there is any uh, possibility without ielts or any english medium test uh, for my master's program you said you wanted to study nursing yes ma'am I'm afraid we don't have a master's program in nursing specifically, um, because uh, if you want to become a nurse in Sweden, you can only study in Swedish. So we don't have an international master's program in nursing. Oh, oh, oh uh, for um, my, I, I did BH nursing in my bachelor's program. There is four year course, no? After bachelor's, uh, that uh, there is any other courses uh, related in health, health faculties? Um, we have a number of programs in medicine, in medicine related subjects. For example, we have a master's program in global health. Um, that is open for nursing if you have a degree in nursing. So maybe that could be an option for you. Um, but I recommend you to look, have a look at our our program catalog to see if, if if this program could be a good fit for you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miruna. Moving to the next student. I am going to unmute Abhishek Aghamkar. Abhishek, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, hi, this is uh, Abhishek's wife, Ruchita. Hi. Okay. Am I audible? Ask your yes. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So I just wanted to get a uh, get an idea that I've, I've uh, I wanted to give an idea about my background. So I've completed my bachelor's in physiotherapy with 60% uh, average. And I want to, um, I have shifted my, um, I mean, I want to complete my uh, master's in clinical research and management, that field. 
so um, just wanted to know if there are any um, courses or uh, and scholarships for the same in uh, in Uppsala. Um, <coughs> well, we don't. We we have a master's program in medical research. Um, or did, because I mean we don't have a a program that is titled clinical research and management. We have a master's program in sustainable management um, and business and management, but um, they are not related to anything in regards to like clinical research. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, medical research, what exactly does it uh, have? Is it similar to um, um, clinical like those subjects in clinical research like uh, drug development and pharmacovigilance and uh, you know ethics uh, committee um, requirements and all those things or uh, well, is it well we actually we have a program that is drug discovery and development actually and we have uh, okay. several other programs and in, in pharmacy related subjects um, but yeah, again, I think uh, you should have a look through our program catalog and see what subjects um, are interesting to you, if, if there are programs that are a good fit, or like you think they sound interesting, and then once you found a program, um, you can check whether or not you meet the intro requirements for that. Thank you so much. Uh, moving to the next student, I'm going to unmute Madhumita Swaminathan. Madhumita, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, hello. Uh, this is Madhumita. Uh, I was uh, actually, I did my bachelor's degree in medical bio nanotechnology. That is nanotechnology purely based on medicinal side. So I want to do forensics master's in your college, in your university. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to know uh, the uh, the uh, part, I mean, post study work about that uh, after the course after completing the course. Uh, you mean like career prospects? Yeah. Um, well, we can have a look at the program website and see what what it says on the the. Um, a career tab. Can you still see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here you'll find career information um, for this program. So for example, yeah, you can work with. I went um, through the show. I okay. went through it fully. Yeah. Okay. So um, about the scholarship. Uh, scholarship. Yes. Did you have a question about that as well? I'm out. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah about the scholarship. Uh, actually, uh, I just want to know whether, like, for masters, you said you'll be giving scholarships and all. So I have to apply it after 18th, you also said. But I just have the uh, eligibility for that. Uh, the uh, the requirements for the scholarship, you mean? Yeah. Yes, so you need to be a fee-paying student, so essentially a student from a non-EU EEA country, like for example India. Um, you need to have applied on time, so before 17th of January, and your supporting documents must have been received before or by the 1st of February deadline, um, and your application fee must have been received by the deadline. So everything must have been received on time, um, and you must have uh, ranked uh, an Uppsala University program as your first choice uh, at the okay. at university admissions. So Uppsala okay. University must be your first priority. Okay, for sure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much, Madhumita. Moving to next student, I'm going to unmute Dr. Praveen Giri Goswami. Dr. Praveen, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Actually, I am a doctor, Pravin Goswami, a dental surgeon. Uh, I had 60% in my graduation, and from last three years, I am working as a private clinician. 
so actually i'm looking for the course something like master in global health or public health related so actually i want to know about the uh, that requirements like i had only 60% in my graduation so is it possible to get uh, admission and uh, one more thing that uh, just scholarship which can i uh, get in this percentage um so in regards to a uh, percentage in in sweden when we talk about masters admission there's um it's like a two step process there's the entry requirements and there's the selection and the entry requirements like the general entry requirements for masters are a bachelor's degree and english language proficiency and if you meet that requirements then you like you're you're qualified and then each mm -hmm. program has program specific requirements so for global health you need to be you need to have a degree in a subject that is relevant to global health so like um, nursing medicine etc um okay. but then there's the selection and in the selection process that's when your uh, like previous grades or gpa or past experience that's when that comes into play um it's really mm -hmm. hard to say what your chances are of being admitted uh, because um it depends on like the overall quality of all the other applicants it depends on mm -hmm. i mean it, it's hard to compare one country's um grading system to another um mm -hmm. so it's hard to give a general answer here however you're welcome to apply if you meet the entry requirements um mm -hmm. that, that is uh, okay. yeah okay uh one more thing ma'am that scholarship which uh, you told about that will cover full uh, education uh, expenses or it will cover including uh, our other expenses like living and all things um the scholarships awarded by Uppsala university cover the tuition fee only they don't cover living costs um okay. so tuition fee only but it's a mm -hmm. full it's like a tuition fee waiver essentially so if you're awarded a scholarship through the university then you don't pay any tuition fee. okay so it will cover 100 percent or it will yes. be partially or Yes, 100% of the tuition fee. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Praveen. Moving to the, just a minute. Moving to the next student, I am going to unmute Peter Kumar. Peter, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Peter Kumar, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, ma'am. Um, I want to find out if you have courses in atmospheric sciences uh, at your school of physical sciences specifically. Um, no, we don't have uh, that particular special specialization. No. Okay. 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 But what are the physical science courses that that you do? For, for masters um well we have a master's program in physics and they have a range of um specializations let me just pull up a list here um, um yeah so astronomy and space physics energy physics geophysics biophysics meteorology nuclear and particle physics Physical chemistry, or I guess that's chemistry. Um, as theoretical physics. Okay, I, I'm actually seeing meteorology master's program in physics. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, so that is more the atmospheric science. Scientists. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, I guess it would be yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mom. Yeah. Thank you so much, Peter, for your question. Uh, the next student I'm going to unmute is Parul Sharma. Parul, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, ma'am, I have recently completed my graduation in biotechnology and I'm now interested to pursue my master's in biopharmaceutical sciences. 
so mm -hmm. i have looked up to few programs which are of my interest in the site of upsala university i have a doubt that whether can i apply for more than one program at a time at the same uh, university yeah. as you oh, sorry yes, uh, I was question. saying that uh, uh, that in in the session you have informed that there is a portal in which we can select the four up to four courses which are of our preference. So can I select those four uh, courses from the same university if I like to do? Yes, yes, you can you can apply to four programs at Uppsala University or two at Uppsala and one at another university. You can combine however you choose, but it's up to four programs. Okay, and uh, do I have to pay the application fee separately for every uh, course or is it included for everything like once? One application fee per application round. So even if okay. you apply to four programs, it's one application fee. Okay, so there is no need to uh, pay the four times of the amount. No, so like no. there is no. No. Okay, uh, and I have another question. Like after completion of masters in Sweden, is there any work permit given to the students so that you know he could gain some work experience being there? Is there yes. any opportunity? Yes, um, you can apply for a residence permit for one year. That is a special permit to remain in Sweden to to look for employment. And then if you if you find a job during that period, your employer helps you um, to apply for a work permit. So you have a year to remain in Sweden and look for a job. Okay, I have another question. As I said, I was interested in biopharmaceuticals. Is this master's program taught in English only uh, or yes. in some other language? It's no, it's only English. English. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's all for now. I have these questions. Ah, last question. I have seen that uh, in the tuition fee structure for my course, it was around 29,000 SEK. Uh, that is for total two years uh, amount or is it for per year? Like the total tuition fee has written is it mentioned for only one year or two years? Um, it's for two years, 290,000, right? Haha, yes, sorry. Yes, that's for two years. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am. Um, I have all, uh, I've got all my answers. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Parul, for your questions. Moving to the next student, I'm going to unmute Devakar Vashisht. Devakar, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Hi. Okay, ma'am. So, masters in computer science or information systems, and but like I have a problem. My bachelor's is not that good. Like I had more than 10 backlogs due to some health issues, but I cleared all of my backlogs and I have 65% uh, uh, in my bachelor's and I graduated recently in uh, September 2021. And I did my bachelor's in uh, within four years. So uh, in computer science. So I want to know what if I got into uh, in MNC. I'm currently working in Infosys. And what if I got into an MNC like Amazon or some product based uh, MNC and applied for masters in computer science in Uppsala University. So will that overcome the negative effect that I'm having on my profile due to backlogs? Um, or still can I apply for masters like yeah. you, you're still welcome to apply. Um, like I said, so um, as long as you have the, de the required degree then it doesn't matter um, like if it took you longer to complete it. If you have the degree, then like that's the requirement. Um, and but then if your grades are are uh, not good or or yeah, like the quality of your application, your grades are taken into account when assessing the quality of your application. Um, oh, OK, but, so like I'm having work experience. What if I gain work experience for like two years? So that will count, right? Um, yes and no. So for most of our programs, students are selected based on your grades, um, like previous studies, um, and a statement of purpose. And so okay. professional experience is something you would write about in a statement of purpose. So essentially, a statement of purpose is like motivating why you would be a good candidate to the master's program. Um, 
and that's where you would bring up professional experience. However, it's not like um, each like if, if of somebody who has worked two years in in, in after a bachelor's before applying to the master's is automatically be better than the person who worked one year. It's not um, usually like it, it's part of assessing the statement of purpose, but most programs don't have like you don't have to submit a CV. So it's more about your academic um, performance rather than professional. Okay, got it. Thanks. Thank you so much, Devata, for your questions. Uh, now I'm going to take a few questions from the chat. Section. So, uh, so this question has been asked by two or three students. Cecilia, when students are asking about how, uh, what about the part-time jobs that students can look upon in Sweden while they are yes. studying? Yes. So um, there is no legal um, obstacle to working as a student in Sweden. If you have a residence permit for studies, then you're also allowed to work. There's no limitation on like only only 10 hours per week, only 20 hours per week. There's nothing like that. You're allowed to work. However, it's an, it, it's important to know that in Sweden, while everyone speaks English and you can get by as a student without knowing any Swedish, it's difficult to find a job if you don't speak Swedish because Swedish employers, they, they want you to be able to speak Swedish. And in a city like Uppsala, where there are a lot of international students, it's very hard to find a job that doesn't require uh, Swedish language proficiency. Um, so that's very important to know that it's hard to find a part-time job even though you are allowed to work. It's also important to know that Sweden is an expensive country and you should not count on being able to finance your studies while by working in Sweden. You shouldn't count on finding a job after you've arrived. Um, you should count on having to have your finances sorted before coming to Sweden. Okay, moving to next question. This is um, regarding the student has asked that uh, I am in the last year of bachelor studies. Uh, so when is the best time that I can apply for MS program for fall 2022? Um, you can apply now. Uh, it's perfectly fine to apply during your final year of bachelors. You just need to submit an extra document, an extra document because uh, you won't have your diploma. So instead you submit a document called statement of enrollment status, which is essentially your, a document where your university says that, yes, this student will have completed their degree by the start of the master's. Um, so there's no problem. You are welcome to apply, but just consider that you need to submit an extra document. Okay, next question is regarding the average cost of living. Uh, so the student has asked that what would be the average cost of living for the students? Does the uh, university provide accommodation to students or students have to find themselves the accommodations? Yes, um, so um, first question regarding cost of living. Um, to get a Swedish residence permit for studies, you need about 8,500 Swedish krona per month of study. Um, and that is what you, the minimum on like what you should count on having to spend on living costs. Because that's calculated based on like price index and average cost of living in Sweden. So um, at least 8,500 Swedish krona per month. It can, of course, vary depending on your personal lifestyle. If you have very expensive accommodation or very cheap accommodation, like it varies, but that's like an average or minimum, um, what you should consider. Um, in regards to housing, we have a housing guarantee for our fee paying students. So if you are a, fee, a student that is a citizen of a non EU country like India, um, you are guaranteed housing through the university. And that essentially means that we provide you with a housing application and then you submit a housing application on time and then you get an offer of accommodation and you can accept or decline. Um, 
If you accept, then you have housing for the entire duration of your program um, and you are responsible for paying rent every month. Um, for example, students coming with family members, so like if you're bringing a spouse or if you have children, um, then you're responsible for finding housing on your own because our the accommodation that we provide is for one person only, so the guarantee is only for the individual student. Um, it's not impossible to find housing on your own. That's what all the Swedish students do and what all the European or EU students do. Um, however, you'll need to um, make an effort and spend some time on the process. But we like we have housing guarantee for fee paying students. I'll take the last question now. So this is uh, regarding the study work permit plus mm -hmm. oh sorry there are two questions actually regarding the post study work uh, permits and second is the uh, how much does the work experience matters if a student is applying for an ms program um so the final question uh, regarding um, work experience it actually depends a lot on the program because each program decides what they what their selection criteria are so one program maybe only considers your grades while another may consider professional experience whether you've uh, worked in a lab or, or you know how relevant your bachelor's is to the master's it's very it varies a lot so hard to give a general answer however i'd say that it is Absolutely, something that you should bring up in your application in a, a statement of person, a statement of purpose, or like a personal letter. Um, uh, but it's not like you can absolutely be admitted to a master's program um, without having professional experience. Um, and then, regards to the um, job seeking permit, so a res the residence permit for uh, remaining in Sweden after your studies to look for a job um yeah so this is a one-year permit it cannot be shorter it cannot be longer it's always one year uh, you apply for it right when you're about to complete your master's degree or program um and then uh, you need to show that you will be able to support yourself during the um, uh during this year that you will have the special residence permit um and then um yeah, you, you can stay in Sweden for a year and look for jobs. And as I mentioned, if you find a job during that period, you your employer will help you apply for a work perm permit. Um, yes, so that's... Thank you. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for answering that. And with this, uh, we have come to the end of the session. And I would like to thank Cecilia for taking out time today and answering student queries. And students, uh, your details. Uh, if you know, if you if there are certain questions that have been missed by us, don't worry. Your details will be shared with the Siksha counseling team, and they will get in touch with you for your further, uh, you know, uh, queries. And you will be able, to, they will be able to help you with your questions. And before I end, I will request Cecilia to please share some guidance uh, to the students that can really help them when they are planning to apply for higher education in Sweden. Um, sorry, um, what did you want me to share? I'm just saying that, you know, if there is something that you would like to share with the students that can really help them when they are seeking opportunities to apply to universities in Sweden. Um, yeah, no, I would say that it's, uh, it's better to apply early than to apply late. So the earlier you apply, the better your chances are of uh, submitting a correct and complete application. Um, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend Sweden as a study destination. We accept plenty of Indian up, up students every year, and uh, I think most of them enjoy their time here very much. And uh, yeah, I hope that we get to welcome all of you to Sweden next autumn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cecilia. And with this, we have come to the end of the session. And thank you, students, for joining us today. And a big thanks to Cecilia for doing this wonderful presentation and helping students with their questions. So with this, I end the session now. So have a great uh, day ahead, Cecilia, and have a great evening ahead, students. Uh, take care of yourself and be safe. Bye-bye. And good day, thank everyone. Bye-bye.